Right, welcome back guys in this tutorial we're gonna see how we can create a web server in NiFi using handle http request and handle http response so these two processors linked together allow us to let's say uh, pairing these two processes with pairing these two processors provide us the ability to use NiFi to visually construct a web server that can carry out any functionalities that are available through out-of-the-box processors so no further ado let's go over it and i will explain what's happening here so before we jump into it i'll let you guys know that this template is gonna be in my github account there is a link in the description that you guys can follow and download the template and also browse all the other resources that you have there um if you feel like you can start a repo or drop me a comment there you know you can fork it whatever you want to do and also considering thumb, considering giving a thumbs up to this video and got more questions and you want to get more involved into this nifi work that i'm doing feel free to join our discord server all right so let's go over this first we have the handle http request this particular processor receives a port that you have to set it up the host name where, where uh, it's going to be running uh we're not going to this example we're not going to use ssl in our context map http is going to be this uh standard http context map very important to to let you guys know this particular context map has to be shared by the handle http request and handle http response if you see it here uh, and we have it in a couple of places we have it here and here let's go with the configuration of the context map pretty straightforward you just put the maximum starting request and request expiration basically sort of a right so what we're going to do here basically we're going to try to count the request done against this uh web server and also we're gonna tell the http request to only respond to get so any this is also another uh, capacity of this particular processor that will allow us to remove access to post put delete had or allow options maximum threads are going to be to 200 the client authentication in this case we're not going to use one but still you have options here container size we're going to leave it as it is and the request max size is going to be one megabyte all right let's go ahead and start this particular flow so i've started all the particular uh, processors and now they're waiting for requests let's navigate to this page and you remember we put the http request to respond to port 999 let's hit this api all right so right now what it tells us the page that is returned it says hey this endpoint does not exist here are some valid api endpoints for you to use so this is not something that he would return to you by default this is something that i've created so let me walk you guys through how this happens so whenever the request comes in obviously i'm counting the request made basically i'm just getting the state value calls this is a uh, calls it's a it's a variable that i've created a second it's not created it will be instantiated i'm writing on attribute basically if this um the http request url equals to this address which we just added this is going to be routed to an invalid request you can create a different route strategy based on the incoming attribute and now this is what i'm using if in case of an invalid request we set the uh we do a replace text and we replace the payload or the flow content with this html basically what you see in front of you so it says this endpoint does not exist and then we give that uh, other information in an HTTP form in, into an HTML form. After that, we send the request back to handle HTTP response. Basically, this is where the end of communication finishes. I'll give you guys an example. Let's stop this HTTP API response and let's do another request. You will see that this goes in circles. He's waiting for the response to happen. If we refresh the flow, you will see that we have a request here. If we were to let this in to go through, you can see that we got a valid response. Great. Now let's go on and listen to him and say, hey, uh, let's run one of the valid API requests. So in this case, what we're going to do, we're going to copy and paste it here. And we're going to say, um, let's, let's leave it as it is right now. 
or let's provide it with values so let's say name uh, adrian age uh, 21 that's my actual age guys and i'm not gonna go for binary i'm just gonna say male because that's what i let's enter and voila you see that for now in the lifetime of this web server we had five requests if we were to do uh another press another enter you can see this request number they incrementally grow and also the values that we pass here are parsed and let's say now fake age which is not um let's make it a bit fun it's a male or a female it's age 41 and his name is adriana that's why we return and we can see that's incremented how, how does this happen right so let's go ahead and stop this float here and do another request so we can see that this particular thing is gonna go in circles and gonna wait for the http response to get instantiated if we do refresh we can see that there uh we have a route on attribute basically whenever the request url equals to forward slash api or some other api it's getting routed to one of this replace text and each of this replace text does pretty much what the other replace text does sort of you know it provides an http an html payload so this is what we're getting return. We're returning this particular thing with this particular parameter values and also the calls. If we were to evaluate the API content and we look at the attributes, basically what it gives us a bunch of information. So do not mind that. We have to look at the actual values that we pass as parameters. So you know the, the equal sign here after the question mark we get of attribute and its value. And an attribute and its value and an attribute and its value so let's go ahead and then identify that in the flow so you can see this here he transforms this into http query parameters gender male and female so if you go here and look at it gender male and female and the same thing happens for the name and obviously for the age now that we get we waited more than 30 seconds the api got a got a timeout we can also play with those values now if i were to let this through nothing would happen in the front end but in the back end we get an error uh, what happens here it pretty much tells us the identifier could not find a valid http response the context or the standard http context map will only maintain that value into into it until its timeout or expiration falls into place so let's take the other route what happens if some other api gets hit basically if we would to add the query string and go back to this api and say some other query I will just say the following. Let's copy this and just punch some dummy data. Basically, you see, it returns us the query URL that we put. That's the outcome or the output of that particular uh, request. But, you know, this is up to you. You can go and play around it. Uh, a very common use case when this happens is having this front end um, getting access to the back end. In some cases, NiFi it's used as a middle layer and will allow you to let's say receive http puts and then do some data crunching integrating with some data stores that you have that can be accessible by nifi and then provide you back with a response all right i hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and i'll see you in the next one